to nothing. Let's check in with Kevin Burkhart. Kevin? Uh, I'm with the man that needs no introduction. Rusty Staub is here. And, uh, man, it is so great to see you and finally sit and chat uh, on the air during a game. We always chat off the air. And, and there's, there's a number of things you do in the community that are amazing, but none more than today. Rusty, you're involved in, in, in what's called the New York Fire, New York Police and Fire Widows and Children's Benefit Fund. And you've been doing it for years. You've raised over $150 million dollars today the big barbecue at City Field to raise money tell me what this is all about and tell me where the money goes well what it's about is you know there's so many wonderful charities in the world that that help so many different people that have different ailments I said but you know there are very few charities where the people that you're trying to do something for you know have made an ultimate sacrifice and given up their life you know with the policemen the firemen the Port Authority and the EMS people you know, they are dying in the line of duty to make the city of New York safer. And shouldn't there be something that we care about that says we, we're going to take care of their families for them anyway, a little bit? You know, you know, as much as we give them all this money that everybody talks about, I'm telling you the fact that we don't ever forget the fact that they lost their husband and two of them their wives. You know, we, we have not forgotten that to come out here and all these families get together today. This is the 30th picnic. Wow. There were four generations of people here at this picnic that came over and said to me, uh, hello, you know, the, in fact, one of them, the, 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 the grandmother had died a year ago, and uh, the other three, you know, you had the daughter, the granddaughter, and the great-granddaughter. Right. Uh, you know, that stuff is an amazing scenario. It touches your heart, and I, I just can't thank the number of people here in New York City who have helped us and from a lot of people all over the world right after 9-11 who you know I mean we raised uh, like 117 million dollars in a year and we were able to do a lot to, to make the lives of all these widows and their families a little better. Why why this not that this it's a bad choice it's a great choice but you know a lot of people do, do a lot of different things with many different charities. Why has this become this isn't just charity work this is a mission for you. You've made this your life. Why has this been the, the, the thing that's been nearest and dearest to you. Well you know I mean it's like we all have things that we do. Uh, this became a dedication. I, I had an uncle who was a police officer in New Orleans. He died on his motorcycle. Uh, I mean, I remember what happened to his family. You know, we were just kids, but it was devastating. Uh, and you can imagine what the benefits were in, in, in the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, the, 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 it's come a long way. And the fact that, you know, so many people have understood now that there really is kind of an obligation to do something for these families. And it's not just not just the money. It's that they really appreciate the fact that we remember what what the loss is. It's new and high spanning right now as we talk to the great Rusty Stop. It really is wonderful what you do. And most if people don't know it, they should know it. Um, so we thank you for the time. And I want to transition. It is ironic that I mean you're here all the time, but playing the A's, you know, and it takes us back. It takes us back to '73, and um, you know, against the Reds, you. You, you crash into the wall, you separate your shoulder, you miss the final game of that series, and people think, okay, well, you know, Rusty was obviously had an amazing year and he helped get us here, and then somehow with one arm, you go out and hit, what'd you hit, 473 in the World Series. Will you please tell me how you managed to get through that and play as well as you did? You know, there's uh, mental toughness and, and, and learning how to adapt uh, to different injuries over the course of your career. Some people can do it. I was able to do it. Obviously, the good Lord was in my corner. Uh, I, I fully did not expect to have the outcome that it was. I just felt like I had to play right field if we were going to win. Yeah. And I told Yogi that after the first game, I was used as a decoy. I mean, I was. I, I just went up knowing they were going to bring the left-hander in. They were going to pinch hit for me. Yeah. And. Uh, you know this you know everybody gets on cortisone and the derivatives but it was a great work of doctors that uh, helped me uh, right after the injury uh, the, the the day after I actually had the injury and then right after that game you know they helped me again and I did take some injections and it was no it wasn't like I took stuff to not feel the pain but you know if used correctly cortisone can be a wonderful product and it I always responded well to it. Uh, somehow I was able to find a way to tuck this right elbow on my stomach and not let it extend because 
You know, it was, I, I couldn't throw a lick. I mean, it was, we kept telling everybody, I have one throw. Yeah, what? I, I could have thrown it a hop, step, and a jump. <laughs> I, I, I'm, what do you you know when you when you take yourself back to that year it was a great year obviously for the team you, you finished strong you beat the mighty Reds and then you take these these A's to seven what what's the fondest memory you have about that season the finest memory is a collective memory of guys who were in last place at the end of August who came together as a team uh, we had great pitching I remember telling people at the end of August who were I said, you know, we're not out of it. We got Seaver, Matlack, Kuzman, and George Stone is pitching great, and Tug has found it. I said, we're not out of it. And they would just laugh at me. I'm not kidding you. They would belittle me when I would say that. Well, we had the last laugh, and we almost pulled the whole thing off. It was it was that feeling of us being a team and, and going that far. <laughs> I was very proud after that World Series. It was disappointing to lose, but that's the proudest I ever was as a ball player. Rusty, it's uh, you're a gem. It's a pleasure for me to talk to you as it always is. Thanks so much for the time. All right, man. It's great to talk to you too. Rusty Saab as we show some footage of that 73 series. It's all A's here tonight though. That's City Field. We'll be back. <laughs>